let me minimize that and then I can, there we go. I don't know what we're trying to, I'll have to run Mercy. Uh, Not the one you were trying to go over, was it? Nope. Not unfortunate. I mean, I could, actually. Just to give power boost to multiple. <laughs> Fuck, Link side. Echo on our left, she's getting cockpit by Mercy. We'll need help over at house. I shouldn't be out in the open. Yeah. Alright, make sure that we're defaulting our orb back to the Echo after we're done healing somebody else up, right? We always want to default our orbs back to kind of the best target after we're done healing someone who's low or something like that. So um, that resulted in Echo dying early in the fight. Um, mm -hmm. Besides that, um, just maybe we're playing a little bit too passive with just the spam damage that we're outputting. So we'll, we'll, I'll just take more of a look at that as we go forwards. I can go Mercy. I just almost have Trans. We might be able to use it in the midst of a fight. She's discorded. Nice sleep. Echo left side. Echo left side discorded. Lucio discorded on point. Play into the wall, play into the wall. Watch out for turrets. Okay, make sure we're not frontlining as a Zenyatta. Right there, we ended up walking like a, very far past our team and out in the open as well. So make sure we're keeping good positioning and sticking next to cover and not being on the open where we're easily killed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can. So I think it's possible that you might be able to make it. Do you know? Do you know if you can make it past the or, or over the gap yeah, with the trans? Yeah, I can make it yeah. over the gap by Mega. So that that's an option there. On top I of that, I just looked at the yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there few few tiny little different things. So we first fight, we, I think we played slightly too passive. Um, didn't have our orb on the right thing. Second fight, we played slightly too aggressive. Um, so we just want to manage our aggression, make sure we're on the right page there. Then we also just ended up getting staggered uh, when we were walking out of spawn there one time. So we want to make sure we're paying attention to our environments and we're making sure we're not getting uh, just spammed out, right? So watch for spam damage to come in and be very careful while you're crossing through open areas. Just like we were talking about at the very beginning, just a lot of tiny little things are going to add up, especially when you're at a higher rank. So getting good at the game is get, is getting rid of those tiny inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. I did not mean to guardian angel into that one. Alright, so oh, um I wanted to go to the left, not So on we we gotta watch the overhealing a bit, making sure that we're not holding down healing when somebody's already full HP. So watch their health bars and make sure that whenever somebody's low we instantly swap to a damage boost and then 
we look for somebody else to heal. There's sometimes where we'll just stick on somebody who's already full HP with regular healing. Which is just waste of time. When you're Valking, unless somebody is low and is in need of a really uh, serious healing, you're just going to be much better off on the damage boost. As it's just going to be the most powerful thing that you could be doing with your Valk. As, you know, just as a kind of fun fact for you, um, Orisa Bongo is the number one fight winning ultimate in the game. So you will, will, will win the most fights with that ultimate. And Valk acts in a very similar way. Whereas if, if you're damage boosting in six people, it's a very powerful ability or five people. So you just want to make sure we're using the damage boost there more often if the healing isn't necessary. So I'm going upstairs. Do you typically old track at all? I do, but in this case, I'm mostly wanting to focus on gameplay mm. and what I'm trying to do. Um, all right. That and like, eh, then I don't know. Yeah, then focus. Yeah, I understand. It's it's difficult when somebody is talking your ear to to do it. Um, then I guess. Uh, I'll stop talking if you'd like to try that for the rest of the game, and I'll, I just want to hear yeah, how you do it. That's fine if you're uh, it's team. I'm also just trying to monitor on them because as a flex support, it is a little bit harder because I'm trying to monitor the healing levels of things, at least to me. Push in, push in, push in, push in. Probably say in general, Mercy is one of the easier characters to to track on because because you don't have to worry as much about mechanics. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, in any case, it's it's up to you whether or not you want to go for it or not. Alright, make sure that we're going to our default targets in between fights there. Um, we kind of sat on our Ana and our Reinhardt for quite a bit when we sh probably should be with our DPS like Junkrat or McCree. And that's just going to be a playstyle thing of just make sure we're sticking with them. We're going to them anytime. Mm -hmm. Nobody else needs healing or we're not needing to res anybody else. Alright, so before you hop into your next game... Oh, I forgot. I never opened Overwatch. Snap. Before you open... Uh, going into your next game, I'm gonna go over s some stuff real quick, and then actually you can go in and get in a queue. It's you know it's ten minutes anyways. So hopefully it's not just you know turning into one minute now for some, for no reason, but no, just. No. I can hit these games. <laughs> oh. There. All right. So I I need to get in Overwatch real quick. Usually I have that open, but didn't have it open this time. I'm streaming. If you want to take a look. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're just gonna go to the training range here real quick. So basically there on our Mercy gameplay, two other tinier things that we were taking a look at. Um, first off, I didn't see any reses happen I don't in both rounds. Most of the so reses, they're up some, and I didn't feel like it was a safe res to get. Yeah, it's, uh, it's... I know I could probably have gotten the hog if I knew where the team was at, but um, since it was just way past that, uh, kind of that entry choke i'd just rather not go up there and get myself killed yeah so, well like in general like it's just something that you want to take a look at like i'm just basically just mentioning the fact that we never used it and you know abilities not getting getting used um yeah. just don't get any value at all and so we just want to be actively looking to use it and us using it is even in some times riskier situations is how we get the most value out of them um mm -hmm. so moving on from that right big thing i noticed is overhealing if we're doing this on somebody it does 
nothing. All right, this is wasted time when we do this. So we want to make sure that when we are healing somebody that they're needing healing, right? Not full HP. So we really need to pay attention to health bars, right? So as soon as we heal somebody up to full HP and we hear the ding or we see their health bar go all the way up, we swap to a damage boost right away. And then we look for somebody else who might need healing, right? We just don't want to continue to be on healing because that's just wasted time. So we want to get into good habits of doing that because that can really, really add up over time um, and become a very big inconsistency if we're just over constantly over healing things. Right. The other thing to take a look at is your target priority and when it comes to which things to heal and kind of have picking out default targets. Most of the time that's just going to be the DPS, right? You often hear that referred to as a pocket target, but really what a pocket target is, is it's a default target. Anytime nobody is, is low or in danger and it's when they don't need healing, um, any, you can just go to heal other people in between fights as well, as well, and you can leave them to go get reses and stuff like that. So basically, anytime we don't need to be doing something else, we're defaulting back to the best thing possible, which is most of the time going to be your DPS, right? But you also want to pick out which ones are which. So mm -hmm. just be thinking about that, as there were a lot of times where we would not be defaulting back to them, and we'd kind of be, when no when we didn't really need to be, we'd be kind of like on top of our Reinhardt or on top of our Ana, when we probably should have been like with the Junkrat or the McCree in that situation. All right, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, one short game, and you can probably, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to get into the next game here to go over more, but um, yeah, uh, if you if you wanted to go over old tracking, I'd probably want to hear. Do you, typically, do you do like team full team old tracking, or do you just keep track of like a couple or whole team? Whole team. All right, and yeah. do you say that does that happen in pretty uh, pretty constantly? Does it happen all the time, or are you pretty inconsistent with it? Um, in scrims, sometimes there's times where they just go over a plan, and I'm like, okay, I'll uh. Just and I, I usually just keep it to myself and thinking, hey, they're about to use this, or hey, uh -huh. they're about to use this. Um, just because in the past, whenever I was first playing the game, I was two years of a tank player, um, and so I kind of got that feel of I need to kind of just remember it because not everyone's gonna end up saying it. Um, yeah. And so I would just think about it, and that's when I know I would be winning those Rhine one v ones or something, just because I knew he had shatter or something else would come up. I would ask, hey. Uh, keep this for this engagement or anything there if it was now it would be telling my tanks um if, uh, yeah particularly in scrims i would end up saying um hey uh, they're gonna have this is this um they're probably gonna have this as our uh, as their win condition uh, this is ours uh, here's how we can get around it can we take a high ground or can we go somewhere first so we can maybe get rid of someone before that happens all right, and... that's that's really good. So you've not only are you doing just doing the old tracking, but you're also moving Black on to line. kind of yeah. Ex I I usually categorize that into like three different areas. You have old tracking, you have old countering, and then old planning. Um, mm -hmm. so just countering the ultimates that you've planned out because sometimes people just like say hey they have this 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 and this but then they don't say anything to follow up with that right they don't say they don't have any plan to go against those they don't um do anything after that point which just means that it's pr pretty much useless unless they, it's just all um, non-important ultimates mm -hmm. I feel a little bit of a delay, but all right. So, um, actually, one other thing we're gonna go over real quick is I think Zenyatta. Uh, when we were on Zenyatta for like half around there, I'm going yeah. to stop watching you for a second because it's loud. Um, basically, just with, when it comes to positioning with our Zenyatta, uh, make sure trying to find more of a medium distance than what we had because basically what happened there was first fight we went like this where we're we're playing as a sniper, right? And then second fight, we went all the way up and we were playing at this range and playing as a Brawl character, right? Whereas Zenyatta does not prefer either of these ranges. He wants to stick somewhere in the middle, right? Because yeah. 
though he is capable of playing as a sniper, he doesn't prefer that range because of the fact that he doesn't have a scope, he doesn't have a lowered sensitivity, so he's just going to be, and on top of that, characters are just going to be super small, so it's going to be very inaccurate to hit shots at that range, um, and then if you're standing super close, obviously Zenyatta doesn't have any defensive abilities or movement or anything, so he just gets bursted down and dies, though he is capable of playing at that range, he does, again, does not prefer it, so we want to look to stick within our medium distance here, somewhere around this range, right? You just don't want to get too close you don't want to get too far um because that just puts you in a bad spot and doesn't allow you to do anything um whereas that's that's kind of like what it felt like in the first fight and the second fight so it's just po positioning was off in both of those as well it's just a regression because in the first place we in the first fight we just played really really, really passive meaning that like uh we weren't shooting all the time we ended up doing a couple of rotations where we just went like kind of back and forth where we, we kind of did something like this where we went here and then here and then here and then back to here right um and then the second fight we just kind of ran straight into them so that was a another issue there all right i see that you're in a game so i'm going to go take a look at that okay. oh it's magic meatball But why is he on tank? Is my question. Okay, first off, Bat doesn't work too. Yeah, first off, Bat doesn't work too well with this comp, as you're gonna be very, it's gonna be very, very difficult yeah. to. Hit projectile shots as well as our immortalities on anybody on our team here. Um, so you might even, yeah, you might be better off swapping to a character like Ana because Baptiste isn't, isn't going to be able to hit Echo. You're not going to be able to he throw immortality at the tanks, right? So you're very limited in how you can heal and how you can use your main ability. Then, second, besides that, just watch out for the spam again, as that seems to be catching us a lot in our rotations. So just be very careful about that while we're crossing. I'm taking fucking spam. I shouldn't. Okay, was Diva da in danger in that room? No. No. So in that case, Nade's probably not going to be necessary because um, it, it's just a waste of an ability when we could use it aggressively in a different situation or hold on to it. Um, because Diva's not really in need of it, right? Nade's only really going to be what? needed when somebody's in danger, not when just when they're low. Yeah. Oh, massive bomb. Uh, junk visor, they'll have nano, they'll have uh wrecking ball. Yep. There's those two. If the fight's over, give the healing the mercy. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't die, please. He almost has back. Couldn't get there. Communication. Your 
Right, the moment that we nailed him there, he didn't have jump because he just used it. On top of that, he wasn't really near anybody, so just make sure we're using it when he is actively able to get on top of people. Mm -hmm. Very long. Alright, um, yeah, go. I'm playing, like, there's no communication, I can't, like, <laughs> that situation we got a little too aggressive, just kind of ran on the point there, make sure we're positioning a little bit outside of point. I, I liked where we were at beforehand until we pushed forwards. Alright, and then we'll talk about something after we're done here. Oh, and then your stream just broke. Oh, okay, it's good now. Ball on your honor, ball on your honor. Alright, um, in that scenario, we don't need to wait on to the, the Genji to get his blade before we're nanoing something, especially if we have a massive advantage in the fight. Um, the other thing is I if you... I to give it to Monkey, but then I was waiting on Blade. Yeah, that's what I'm saying though, is you probably just give it to the Monkey rather than wait on the Blade. Or if you see 75, you can also nano him, or nano him early, because a lot of the times if he's very close to it, like 75, he can get it within that nano because it'll up his damage and get him at his ultimate faster um thing i'm noticing so far on our ana is that we need to put a lot more attention to our abilities i'll talk about it more after the round's over but um ability usage right now is the, seeming pretty poor we'll talk about it in a bit was tracer an intended target yes yeah all right I have a tracer on your honor. Alright, most of the time tracer is not going to be the best nano target, especially in comparison to a character like Monkey, who you could give it to. Um, Tracer's just gonna, basically just in general, characters that rely on mechanical skill aren't gonna be what you want to give it to, and consistency usually trumps over that when it comes to using nanos, that's why you find things like Visor, Blade, High Noon very effective, because it's just consistent damage. Reinhardt, Monkey are really good, just because it's consistent, easy to get damage. Alright, um, so... Basically, we'll, we'll talk about our abilities in a moment once the round ends here, but our ultimates, make sure we're keeping a, a track in our mind, like, hey, what are the best targets? At the very beginning of the game, we should kind of come up with a rough priority list in our head and go, okay, this is the best person to be nanoing, this is the second best person to be nanoing, this is the third best person to be nanoing. That way, if the first best person doesn't have their ultimate, or they're dead, or they're out of position, and you need a nano, then you go to the second person, and then so forth with the third, right? And that's a scenario, Monkey probably would have been the best uh, if Genji didn't have Blade, right? But Genji, of course, would be number one if he did. Um, Tracer, I probably put even put Tracer below a D.Va most of the time, because D.Va would b benefit much more from the damage reduction as well as the health healing and maybe a little bit less from the damage boost, but um, it, you would still get a lot more value out of that on a D.Va than you would on an Ana. Um, now, moving on to ability usage. Sleeps, I think I just like to... Uh, honestly, I don't have too much of a problem with sleeps. If you see that you're not getting contested very heavily, then just look to use it um, in fights as we're holding on to it slightly, which is fine if they have some dive characters, but if we see that we're not getting... On Doom. 
Doom to come in on you, yeah. Doom Tracer and Ball. Exactly, which is what I'm saying. If they have dive, then you can hold on to it. But if you see that you're not not getting contested at all, then you can you can use it once in a while. Um, if you see an opportunity for it, but we never really look for the opportunity. But the main one I'm looking at right now is our Nade. As Nade, I have not. I saw maybe like one or two anti nades, and more often than not, you want to be looking for anti nades, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, with the percentage of anti nades that we're getting is more like 80% uh, healing, 20% anti nades, whereas 100% of your nades should be actively used to look for an anti nade. But that's not going to happen all the time. You're going to need it for healing, right? But healing comes only when it's necess necessary, when somebody's in danger, when somebody's super low. Um, that's when we use healing, which is going to happen around like 40% of the time. So the split should look more like 40 healing, 60 da uh, nade, but it's not looking like that most of the time here. I'll talk more about that once we get the chance. Cream mini or mega. Cream mercy mega. Ball on point. Got her alone. Do you gonna be up on our top line here? So, nice nah, since uh, we just probably should have used the need for the self healing, because like I said, it's, it comes out when it's needed. And in that situation, we did need it because we were in danger and low health without a support to help us out. Um, uh, besides that, I really like the ultimate timing there and who we used it on, so that was really good. Alrighty, so a good attempt at the nano there at the end, so you don't have to hop into a game quite yet, because we'll go over something real quick. Alright, sorry, you can, I, I keep forgetting that we're dealing with 10 minute queue time. Sorry, usually uh, the plot players queue like twice as fast as you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, one moment as I was just hopping on my main in between rounds, but then I forgot about it. So... I am streaming and you can get into a queue. Alright. So it's about five minutes, so. So, um, big thing there was nade usage. Now, basically, when it comes to nade usage, like I talked about, 60% of them are going to want to be used for anti nade purposes because anti nade is just so freaking good. Oh, you just got a game, you said? No, audio would cut out. Oh, okay. Um, I, can hear you. <laughs> I was saying we just want to make sure we're looking for nades as nades are very, very, very powerful 
abilities in our kit, right? A 6 mana anti a lot of the times can be more powerful than even like a nano boost can be sometimes. So we, and it's on a cooldown on top of that. So we want to make sure we're actively looking to use it as a lot of the times there it just didn't seem like we were actively looking to use it. It's like when, and when, when we would look to use it, it'd be kind of like a passing thought. It would be like, Heal, 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 heal. Oh yeah, nade, right? We just toss it in, take a half second, and then we just line it up real quick and toss it in. And that's not how we should be looking to approach the game. Instead, because nade is such a massive ability in your kit, we should be looking to put healing on the side burner. And healing comes out as kind of like a... a a just a uh what do you call that like healing just should be something that just happens passively it's just something that you're not really putting much of your brain power into but a lot of our brain power and should be going into our needs because that's how we actually get value um need can act as a good offense to therefore act as a good defense like we were talking about earlier with your <laughs> immortality usage right so when we land a big nade that puts them all at low hp all like where they can't heal and that means that they're pressured and they can't and they have to back up a little bit if they decide to push forwards then that's all the better for you because you get, get to insta melt them while they don't have health um and if they back up then that's better for you as well as that means that now you've created space for your team and you their, your team's taking less damage, therefore you need less healing. So either way, it's a win-win for you. Um, so nade's just really, really good. We want to look to actively use it, put a lot of thought and attention into it as we just kind of, every time I see us use it, it's just kind of, like I said, we just kind of like toss it in there when we want to make sure we're using a little bit, of putting a little more energy into it. Okay, so I see you're in a game. Um, snap, I should have, in that case, I probably should have just not let you hop in there, but it's fine. We'll... Guess we can't go over that real quick then. Um, yeah. In general, look to use uh, if you want to. I don't know if you're still looking at my screen, but mm -hmm. to hit nades, we can scope. A tech that you can use is to scope in. Look at your unscoped uh, or your your ultimate charge at the bottom, and you toss a nade, and that nade will hit them. Right, from any height, any range. That's how you can look to land some longer range needs. On top of that, watch out for shields and things that can get in the way of you and try to bypass those. And then thirdly, the probably the biggest thing to actively look for needs is to look for off angles, right? Is to not just go with your team, but to go to the side of your team. So if our team's there, we're here. We can go in the left room here and just toss a nade in the side. This gets past your entire team. It gets past, past their shields. It gets past their tanks. Right? We just want to make sure we're putting a lot more effort into our nades and looking to get bypass the things that can stop us so that we can land their nades more effectively. All right, mm -hmm. I'm stop streaming and going to be watching yours here. So during that fight again, you can kind of see it with the nade was like, we were kind of shooting, healing, 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 and then all of a sudden we kind of did a big flick on the point with a nade, and then just hit a shield, right? Just because it's not really something we're putting attention to. I'll move on from that topic, though just keep in mind that's probably one of the biggest things on our on a gameplay, but we'll move on since we don't want to just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Massive nade. Can't see you, huh? Alright, their positioning was a little bit far from the fight. I probably would have liked to see you more where your Hog and McCree were on that high ground instead of the one where you were at because your team ended up pushing past 
and then that meant that you couldn't really see anybody. There's Ana on your, or your, uh, Tracer on your Ana. Alright, so we used to, uh, are all in a losing fight there, or a lost fight there, right? So make sure we're paying attention to whether or not we're winning or losing, so that we're not ending up. Trying to contest that, though, since we had a ball, able to maybe try and get back. Um, I, I still don't think that that was worth it, because he would have just gotten melted. When it's like a 2v6 scenario, that's a lost fight, right? No questions okay. asked, it's almost going to be unwinnable, so... Um, you're better off coming to the next fight, right? Even if, like, if that ups your chance, let's say you have a 10% chance of winning that, right? Isn't it better to just come into the next fight with, like, a 60% chance of winning because now you have your extra ultimate, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not really, you don't want to really go for fights where you have a low chance of winning if you don't need to. Right? On top of that, using your ult earlier in the fight probably would have been better as well, so just look, make sure you're looking to use your ults earlier in fights. Trace is going on her back right. Ults that. Alright, since the fight's done here, I'll talk again. Since, like, ults that are used early just get more volt ults value than ults that are used second area or mid fight. Right? Good comparison is like an enemy on a ult, right? If she uses nano, she gets kills value out of it, and therefore your team's at a disadvantage. And if we use nano second, it's not going to get as much value as the nano that was used first because now we are down players and we have less capitalization. And it can also help us stop us from. Thing. Using that another way. Yeah, another. And maybe wasn't necessary. Okay, pretty good nano. Behind. Yep. Probably gonna say just on our Ana looking like Nates is the biggest thing that we need to work on, and it's also probably one of, I mean, one of the more important things on Ana. Make sure. Here we have a pretty awkward angle on our team, so we might want to push forwards a little bit. Yeah. That way, if the fight happens up there, we actually have an angle. Yep, I like the idea to go high grounds here. You can get nades oh, pretty okay. easily from up there. Sigla, one. If you need to. All right. Um, make sure you're not isolating yourself too far from your team, especially if they have characters that can get on you very easily, like a tracer and yeah. a ball. All right. We just want to position ourselves a little bit closer to like our Zenyatta and our, our McCree. Second off, trying not to scope too much. Like when you see the uh, there's a tracer on top of you, um, guess that's just make it super easy for us to kill us. So that'd be a situation where quick scoping would be would be a good idea because that way we can still heal at a distance while also not making us dead. Um, yep, so just a couple big mistakes, died and died a couple times, right? Deaths are a very big one that you can look to improve off of. Um, 
like 75% of the time you die, there's something you could have fixed, right? 25% of them, not really much you could have done, but uh, most of them you will be able to look at and go, okay, what are, what could I have done better? Was I out of position there? Did I Was I too aggressive or too passive? Did I misuse my abilities? Um, right? Was my awareness slow? You can look at the death and think about what could, did we do wrong? Because obviously deaths are big mistakes, right? It's a, it's a mistake that we can look at and go, okay, very obviously I, deaths, I, I didn't want to die there. So we want to instead be making sure that we're thinking about what we could have done instead, right? So if we were out of position there when we died to the tracer, be where do we want to be positioning instead, right? If that was bad positioning, where would have be better positioning been? So we think that in our heads, and that's a really, really fantastic way to self-improve. Even while you're like in the middle of playing a game, that's how I got better at the game was I, you know, I never got coaching up until like after the point I hit my peak and I played Ana um, when I hit my peak. So basically I just self-improved by thinking, what could, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? Or what could I have done instead? Right? And then how can I apply that? And that's what you can look to do to fix your own gameplay. Um, at the moment, I think uh, we're starting to see a lot, little bit more now that we've played for a little bit. Um, so on Ana, there is quite a bit there to just unpack. Especially with the nade usage and positioning were the two big ones there. Okay, shift. You're using that either when you are low, or your t or you have to burst heal to heal up your team. So make sure you're paying attention to those. The shift that we just used wasn't really not none of your teammates needed it, so we probably just could have held on to it. Backside. Just going for you, uh, Zen. Or for you. Okay. There we are a little bit open on point. Um, look to make sure we're make sure we're trying to use cover. You're not just plopping ourselves on point. As that means that we're going to be very easily shot by a character like the McCree. Um, Zen, where Zenyatta was positioned would have been maybe good positioning again because that's where I cover didn't is. Next to the support, though, in case we both got dived. Uh, you want to. That's actually where what you want to do is you both want to be together. That way you can support each other, right? If you're isolating yourselves, that means that when you get dove, you can't help each other, right? You can't immortality both of you. But if you stick with him, then you can both support each other. That's kind of how it wor works in any comp you're in. You want to stick with other people when you're when they're on a dive. The more you isolate yourself, the easier of a target you're going to be, and the easier of a target your teammates are going to be. All right. Very nice headshots there. So far, not mechanics, not really any issue at all. You hit good shots. Zen heal. I'm doing that at the initial peak of the fight so I can have it mid fight is why I. Mm. Yeah, but you also don't want to use it when it's unnecessary because it, even if you're like. Because you can say the same thing about that and just say if you hold on to it, then you never needed to. You know, you know, never need to use it, and therefore you have it mid-fight already, but it's just not being used unnecessarily. If you're using it unnecessarily, then that means that, like, if two seconds later you actually need burst healing, you don't have it, right? It's a 12-second cooldown. That that means that an entire... There's, it's almost, I can almost guarantee that in every single fight that you're in, there's going to be a situation within that 12 seconds where it's going to be necessary, right? So misusing it just means that we end up dying, or teammates end up dying, when we could have used it to burst heal or to heal ourselves. And our Hans is throwing because I'm not performing well. Trace are in the back here.
Make sure you're looking to use immortality. All right. The ladies don't, that don't get used don't get value. Unfortunate about the about the thrower here. Tracer's on our left here. Maybe. Tracer's up top left. Alright, um... Tracer lower left, Doc. You can live. Yeah, get in that situation, make sure we're, we're looking to use our ults early in the fight, that way we use it before we end up losing some of our players and therefore have a better advantage. Um, are you still trying to win this? If, if not, if you're... I don't know, it's up to you, but... If you're not, then we could probably just get into the review while we're waiting here. Uh, or Sagan. Oh wait, Sagan. Uh, I so yeah, I just said, are you, do you feel you still want to try here? Or if you're just going mean, to wait for it, then we can just get to the review. We're going to be down 5v6. Yeah. Because um, our Hanzo doesn't want to take place because of my mistakes. Yep. It's unfortunate that some people do that. All right. Well, then if you if you want to put most of your attention and just listen to me, then we can just go over the the review uh, portion. So, mm -hmm. um, just going kind of in a circle here, kind of around the bout. What are the strengths, and weaknesses? What do you want to work on? Um, probably so abilities. Starting off with ability usage on. I guess let's we went over a bunch of different characters. So let's just go over ability usage on auto to start off. Needs need a lot of work. Um, just want to make sure we're putting a lot of attention and in, into them as we're not really getting a, a max value out of it. And that's actually how we're going to look to carry our games is, is by landing good needs. Whereas if we're not landing needs, then that's how we just kind of do our job. It's how we exist. But if we land needs, that's how we're actually carrying and doing things. I yeah, can just go ahead and look to and leave and then I'll, I'll stream here real quick. And then we can just go over this in the training range. Uh, you can just close your stream. So yeah, need. Put a lot of attention into it, right? Um, just probably going to be one of the big things to look to use, right? Look, don't just kind of shoot, 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 chuck and nade, right? We want to be putting a lot of attention and time and effort into it. We need to basically we're thinking about how we're using our nade a couple seconds before we're using nade. So we're we're eyeing it out. What what do we have to block us? Right? We're thinking do they have shield? How do we get around shield? We're looking for a good situation where they're all clumped up. So we're we're healing while paying attention so that we can be looking to chuck in a nade when the moment's right. right? Side side sleeps not too too bad. Just uh, only thing I would say is maybe like if we're not getting contested at all. Look to use it a bit more as we hold on to it quite a bit. Um, then moving on to ultimates. In general, the ultimates, make sure we're looking to use them. Um, we're a very, basically, the only thing I would say is just look to use them at the very beginning of fights. So sometimes we're using them like mid-fight or after fights, and that's not where they're going to get their most value. You want to use them at the very beginning of fights. That stops you from being forced to hold on to it or use it in a bad situation. It also just gets the most value when you use it at the very beginning of fights because ults that are used first get more value than ults that are used second. Um, then on top of that, make sure you're not ulting in fights that are lost or won right we end up using that and most of the time you're not going to do that that way you have a better chance in your next fight moving on to uh, mechanics mechanics not really any any problem i didn't see really any problem at all so i'm not even going to spend time working on that or talking about it um really really good on just the me mechanical end up like hitting things um only say maybe like just mechanics of like tossing needs of just like the arcs is we need to get used to that and just make sure we're hitting those better um Moving on to awareness and positioning, All right? Awareness, I think, also is looking pretty solid. Um, just pay attention to when you're winning or losing fights. Um, besides that, I don't think pay attention to, like what your health bar is at, so we can look to heal ourselves when we need it. And that is pretty much it. Oh, then one one other thing on that end is as well is just make sure paying attention like teammates and stuff like that. Um, for like who are na good nano targets. Right?
comes to nanos of going one to three with a priority list of thinking what are the best things in nano that way like we're not panicking and doing it in the middle of a fight and playing it out in the middle of a fight but we have a plan ahead of time on what to work on right rather than just doing it randomly on the first thing we see right um just Plus takes a lot of are saying just nano me nano me like yeah we're just constant like dude shut no, up like exactly <laughs> most of the time you're not gonna you want to listen to that type of stuff you just, you go for the best thing not the thing that people want you to do um so have the decision stops like kind of that pressure from happening all right now moving on to positioning and this is another one of the bigger areas um we didn't go over this, but you know, if we're standing right here, this is bad positioning because it takes us one, two, three seconds to get behind cover, right? Therefore, mm -hmm. that is out of positioning. There's an absence of cover. Over here, we have cover, so we have much better positioning from here. Um, in general, sometimes we're just a little bit too far on the open, um, and that results in us dying. Sometimes we end up being too far away from our team. It, that's really only going to be an issue when they have flankers or dive characters. The more and more di characters they get, the closer and closer you should be with your team, right? So, you know, maybe they they have one tracer. We just be a little bit closer, but if they, they have, they're on a full dive, we want to basically be, like, hugging inside of our players, right? So that they can help us, they can defend us, and we can heal them. If we're off on our own and isolate ourselves, that makes us a super easy dive target to get Know, to, for them to get on, right? And it means that if they dive our, our teammates, we can't really see them and help them as well. Um, now, on from now with our positioning on our Ana, make sure we're looking for like off angles to land nades a little bit better, right? You are getting into a game, so I don't know if you saw it, right? But enemy team there, we're here. If we're trying to get through the main angle, we have five people blocking us, a shield blocking us, tanks blocking us. We walk to the side here, right? We just get it past super easily, right? Same thing on the high ground, right? We just go up to high ground real quick. And if the enemy team's right below us here, we get past our whole team, past the shields, and just plop it straight down on top of them, right? So th that's not always going to be an option, but it's going to be an off angles are going to be an option like half the time. So we just want to make sure we're looking for them, and they're going to be really, really good ways to land nades. And we just, in general, just want to be putting a lot of attention to that. Now, on to some of the different characters here. Mercy, I didn't really see it, see us use res at all, but same thing was with our ultimate. Uh, with our ultimate, make sure we're looking to damage boost a little bit more, and in general, make sure we're not overhealing. So when people are full HP, we're not healing, but we're swapping the damage boost and looking for somebody else to heal, so that um, we're not wasting time. So as soon as they get full HP, we damage boost, and we look to and we look to swap. All right. Besides that, I, didn't, I never got to see reses, so I don't really have anything to worry about that. Mer mechanics on an issue, positioning and awareness are me the same, and. No problems with their flight. Baptiste um, may, needs a. It's just another one. It's just like it's really important. I don't think it was too terrible. Just want to make sure we're using it and we're not holding on to it because it, when it's not used, it doesn't get value. Ultimate other ones is just make sure we're using him at the right timings at the very beginning of fights. Other than that, good placement with it. No problem there. Um, just make sure that we're using it early, not holding on to it mid fight. Um, mm -hmm. And then shift usage, make sure we're using it when we need healing or when our team needs burst healing, right? Other than want to use it that way because it's just going to be a waste and it's a long cooldown and we don't want to, you know, put it on that cooldown if we might need it within the next five seconds, right? Mm -hmm. And then that is it. That's like kind of specific to BAP. No problems again with mechanics. Uh, and then I think that was it. We went over we went over Zenyatta for a minute. Um, I never got to see us use Trance. Um, just make with our positioning, make sure we're playing mid-ranged. Um, no problem with our orb, or with our orb, Harmony Orb, make sure that we were um, making sure we were sticking it back on our kind of priority target once we were done healing something else, right? So we, that was kind of the same thing with Mercy as well. We talked about kind of pocket targets, right? If we're trying to keep it on the Echo and we and somebody else is low, we heal them up. But then as soon as they're full, we swap it back to our Echo, right? Same thing with our with our Mercy. Make sure that we are pocketing the things that are going to be best to be pocketed. So that's going to be our DPS most of the time. All right. Then um, that is pretty much it. So main points. So probably say that um, on on um, let's see. I'm trying to think through this real quick. I'd probably say in general ability usage was the biggest thing, especially on a, on Ana, um, like, like a, our Nade, but then to a lesser extent uh, on other characters as well. So just in general, probably say ability usage, but it particularly Ana is the one where it's the, where it kind of pulls it up uh, the most. Now, mm -hmm. second thing to work on is probably going to be our positioning, um, followed up by our ultimate usage, and then 
awareness just needs a little tiny bit of work and the mechanics not really any problem at all so that's just kind of like the order of the, the things you're going to want to look, work look to work on um do you have any questions on anything we've gone over mm, not particularly all right so then i'm going to end the